first three seconds are key because if people are scrolling through their newsfeed, you need those three seconds to make them curious about what's next. You're listening to the Marketing Study Lab podcast with me, Peter Sumpton, the Lego master of marketing, providing you the building blocks you need to be successful with your marketing. This intro lasts about a minute, so feel free to skip forward if you've heard it all before. It's nothing new. So what's this podcast all about? We chat to some amazing people to give you practical advice that you can implement right now that will make your marketing truly awesome. The conversations we have will lead you to the actionable marketing knowledge you've been craving. Just a quick word about supporting the show. The best way to do this is to leave a five-star Apple podcast review. It helps me get the best guests and helps others find the podcast. All I want to do is help people get the best out of their marketing. If you've got a burning marketing question right now, let's chat it through. All the links you need to contact me are in the show notes, because let's face it, you ain't writing anything down right now. Now let's get on with introducing our guest. Facebook ads are a topic we probably all know a little about, and we certainly all consume them on some level, passively or actively if you're on the Facebook platform, of course. But do we really understand what's going on behind the scenes here? Our guest on this episode, Naira Perez, is a Facebook ads expert and is with us to go through all the elements we need to know to start effectively engaging with our audience on Facebook through ads. Naira, the founder of Spring Hill Digital, is a data geek that is committed to brand building through paid social media. So what better person to speak to about Facebook ads than Naira? On this episode, we go through the most important Facebook ad actionable tips you need to get your campaign going and getting results, including the following. Building an audience and targeting, bidding strategies, what makes a good ad, and the metrics we need to be analysing. But first, I need clarity on this question. Naira, how do you know if you are a data geek or not? That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, um, that, the answer will be, if you look at data and see a story, you are a data geek. When oh. you cannot wait to get data, to look into it, and always have questions that generate more questions so you can go hunting for the answers, uh, then you're a data geek. And if you see a spreadsheet and you think that it's beautiful, then you know you're a data geek. <laughs> <laughs> When other oh, people would yeah. run away from the spreadsheet, it was like, ah, and you're like, yes, I cannot wait to get into it. That's it. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. That's a great answer to that. Absolutely love it. Brilliant. Everyone, all the data geeks like, yeah, come on. <laughs> and if you're not, that, even if you're not, people are listening like, I kind of want to be a data geek now. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. I, I call it the dark side, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Right. Okay. So let's get into a little bit more serious conversation. And what brings you to this dark side, this point in your career? And can you explain what you're up to now? Yes. So I specialize in paid media. Uh, it's social paid media and search engine marketing, uh, Google ads. Bing ads, which are now called Microsoft ads. Um, And what brought me here is actually, I started in advertising um, through infomercials, which are, Mm -hmm. the fancy term is direct to consumer advertising. But we started in infomercials even before um, digital marketing was cool. So um, it is what I call performance-based marketing, which is every day we will get the calls that people made, the orders, the point in the script where people dropped off. We had all these data and then we could make the strategy for the next day. Mm -hmm. What channels were we going in? What channels we will have to pull uh, out of? And basically also by listening to the calls, we could see, okay, this is not flowing the way we want and people are getting confused. Therefore, we have to modify it. So I got just amazed at the fact that 
we could actually base our marketing in real trends, in real actionable um, things that we see. So I got addicted to it. And from then on, it was all paid media all the time. Um, I love branding and my job as a marketer is to protect the brand Mm -hmm. while getting results. And that's how I always looked at infomercial. It was, we protect the brand, but we get sales and we analyze every step of the sale process. So, um, yeah, that's how I got hooked up on the data geek part Mm -hmm. of, um, advertising. And from then on, uh, then the internet, uh, Facebook started to be really big and I wanted to learn more Mm because with TV advertising, you have to wait, um, you know, a day and then your strategies, sometimes we could do them, change them on a dime on one week or two weeks, but it was a long process Mm. where Facebook advertising, Google advertising was instantaneous almost. And just couldn't resist. Couldn't resist. (laughs) You you couldn't wait for that data. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So went into digital advertising by myself uh, and then just got every piece of information possible to um, know more and just how other people were doing it. Um, then went and got a certificate in it, just kind of put all the concepts I had learned through experience together, worked for an agency and, um, and decided that I didn't like how agencies were, you know, we did, we had philosophic, um, uh, differences and I decided to do my own. So I truly believe in looking at the data. I truly believe in partnership with my clients. So if something goes well, we both succeed. Mm -hmm. And if something goes bad, we both have to figure out what's not going well. Because it's, I can bring you all the leads of the in the world. I can bring you really cheap leads. But if if something falls off after that, if if I bring people to your house and then you don't invite them in, Mm -hmm. then what's the point? Yeah. Right. So, um, so I started with that. And also I believe that if we get people that are experts on what they do and they want to work in an account, then their, their lives are better. Their, their work is better and the, the client benefits. So in that sense, we're not a normal agency. Mm. We actually put teams together as needed. So I don't have somebody sitting around that I pay every month and I'm like, Oh, You know, I know you don't know how to do this, but I'm paying you and this client needs it. So let's put you together. We do not do that. We actually actively go and say, okay, I need a TikTok specialist or I need a Facebook specialist. And and I also believe that the algorithms are complicated enough Mm. that you cannot be a specialist in Google and in Facebook and in Instagram and in Twitter. So um, I look for people that only specialize in one channel, but know how to coordinate with other channels. So that's, that's, that's cool. it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's, that's how Spring Hill Digital was born. And we only do paid media. Mm-hmm. We do not specialize in one industry. We specialize in one part of marketing and we mm-hmm. do it for many different industries, um, which is also a little bit different than other agencies. But um, absolutely love what I do. <laughs> that's, that's excellent. I, I love the fact that you just bring in specialists as and when you need it. it. It's almost a, if you look at the traditional way of working, it's like you said, you set up a team and then it's, can you do this? I can a bit. <laughs> okay, we'll learn a bit more and then you can do that for, for, for the foreseeable when you've already got a team and you're not looking to employ anyone else. Um, yeah. I, I think that's completely out the window now. And we should be, picking and choosing these teams for specialists, certain elements and certain channels and certain comms because you get the best out of people then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And everybody benefits. I mean, people are happier coming to work. People um, are happier receiving that work. It's a higher quality. And whenever somebody hires us, they know that if I tell you we can do this channel, that means Mm -hmm. we can't. And yeah, you're going to have the best person at it. You're not going to have the intern doing social media, which sometimes that's what happens. Mm-hmm. Like you were saying, like, you know, 
you don't know about it, that's fine. Learn it and then we'll pretend that we do. And we don't. We yeah. are also very honest. If somebody asks us to do something that we don't know, we're like, okay, well, we don't know how to do it. Let's go into it together. And then we'll figure out something that will work for both of us. And that honesty always brings more honesty and more trust. Yeah. And that's at the end of the day, what a partnership should be. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I, I, I just think that we do have all our specialisms, um, but, but bringing them together collectively mm -hmm. can you know it can multiply what, what we actually do and by no way shape or form was i saying that uh, to create a culture you know you need to build a team around you and and, and mm -hmm. keep that team together because you grow stronger together but the great thing about how you work is that you can work with somebody and if they're good at what they do you retain them you keep them for certain projects if they're not then it's like you just find somebody better and you build up and build up and build up mm -hmm. that way which is fantastic i love it yeah, yeah. And also when somebody when somebody can work with many different clients, even if it's not our clients, um, then they bring a wealth of knowledge mm -hmm. that otherwise maybe we wouldn't be able to provide, right? So um, that I act absolutely love and I am not afraid of my contractors to have other clients outside of us. What they cannot do, obviously, is have the same industry, same like a competitor of our clients so there are limits to the, our relationship but go ahead and just have other clients and bring what you learn there into our clients and, and let's think outside the box because otherwise you get inside the box mm -hmm. if you only do one industry if you only do one type of client so we often bring knowledge from other clients and and it's fantastic and there's nothing more prevalent to, to highlight that fact than what's going on in the world right now. You know, if, mm -hmm. if somebody's one dimensional and they're focusing on, on, on one channel, and I'm thinking more traditional channels here, but if they're just focused on that one channel and then that completely disappears, i.e. footfall through a door, what mm -hmm. do you do? You know, and, and it's interesting that we should, we should be looking at different channels because we don't want to be in that, in, mm -hmm. in that situation where that one channel that's, that's generating the income fails for us. Exactly, exactly. So today, I'd like to get some actionable tips from you on Facebook ads, because it's mm -hmm. one area we haven't covered on Marketing Study Lab, but I'm, I'm fully aware that it's one area that a lot of people know about, a lot of people see them on a daily basis without a doubt, and they can pay lip service to them, but whether they know the ins and outs of them, I'm, I'm not quite sure, and what makes it tick, I'm, I'm not sure. So what I'd, I'd like to start with is, is basically what is a Facebook ad? Yeah, yeah. So a Facebook ads are ads that can appear in your news feed where you're reading your news and keeping up with friends or they can show up in the right hand corner. Um, and it can be in, in desktop or mobile. Mm. Uh, but what makes Facebook so particular and so good at is these, are at, these ads are highly targeted. Okay. So Facebook keeps information about what each user does in its platform and sometimes outside of the platform. So it creates a profile of you. Mm -hmm. So it notes where you like to hang out. Like maybe you like soccer or football. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> <laughs> um, football. And maybe you like certain teams. Um, maybe you like to hang out in certain pages. So it starts creating these football profile of you, you like sports. Um, so if I had something related to sports or a particular sport, I would definitely want to target you because you're mm -hmm. interested in it. So without Facebook, doesn't tell me you, Pete, or, are the person that is going to be targeted. It's telling me, you know, a male between the ages of 30 and 50 uh, that likes soccer or mm -hmm. football. Ooh, that's going to be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Suck is fine. Suck is fine. <laughs> um, so you can target people through um, demographics, age. You can target them by gender. You can target them by many demographic location. But you can also, by those interests that I just mentioned, mm -hmm. by the websites or groups they follow, by anything that indicates a behavior. So Facebook is really good if I want who to target, 
I go to Facebook. Plus mm -hmm. they were from the beginning really good at it and they have evolved in such a way that you can be really surgical about how you do this. Um, but the only thing that you don't know is if it's the right moment for your product. Let's say we're talking about snow tires. Um, I can actually target people that live in areas prone to snow. I can target people that drive or are interested in a certain type of car. Now, is it the time now to advertise for snow tires? Are they looking for the snow tires? I don't know that. Mm -hmm. I just know that whenever that person is interested, she is there for me. In okay. comparison, whenever you compare to Google ads or Bing ads, uh, those are intention based. That means I am looking, I am searching for snow tires. You don't know who I am, but you know that I'm looking for snow tires. Mm -hmm. So it's a different way to approach it, and it's a different game plan. Um, in Facebook, so you are interrupting their programming. They're there looking for news, to catch up with friends, to see videos of, how, of five ways to cook an egg, uh, and then all of a sudden... Uh, you've seen it. I know you like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I'm on then... day five of five. It's brilliant. <laughs> uh, yes. And then your ad comes in. So you're interrupting their programming. So there is certain, certain things that we need to do to make that less intrusive, and especially nowadays. You, mm -hmm. you cannot be tone deaf to what your audience is going through. Um, so in a nutshell, that's what Facebook ads are. Okay, so so how targeted can can we be? I know you mentioned quite a few elements there in terms of how we can target, but are we talking um, a singular person w with no name, but just a demographic? Are we talking ten, a hundred, a thousand? What what numbers are we talking about here? Well, Facebook has gotten really really good at protecting your privacy, so audiences cannot be too small. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, then you can identify almost who they are. So actually, whenever you're, um, as an example, uploading email addresses and creating lookalike audiences, which lookalike audiences are um, audiences that look like something else. Mm -hmm. So if I upload a list of email addresses of customers, as an example, and I say, you know what? I know these people have bought from me. I know they have something in common. Facebook, figure out what's, what they have in common and then give me people like my customers. Right. So even in those elements, you have to have a number that protects their privacy. Mm -hmm. So I like to say if you have a thousand members and above, then the privacy is protected. Um, but Facebook is is going to establish limits. And even in email addresses, you cannot go below 300. Okay. One thing I found really interesting, and it, it was just highlighted in it's probably a workshop I, I was doing, uh, was the fact that all these other different uh, sources and software and, and, and things online where you get the, you can sign up using Google, you can sign up using your Facebook login account. And I'm like, well, that, that's a simplistic way of doing it, but I, just, I can't figure out this link. And then it kind of clicked and it was, well, obviously, because then they get the information from that site about what you're doing. And yeah, and, and then it all kind of made sense. So for, for people yeah. that are listening, just be wary when you are signing up. Yeah, it's dead easy to use an additional account that you've already got to sign up to something, but your data has been tracked. It's been tracked. And as I said, Facebook, I'm going to defend Facebook a little bit on this one. Facebook is protecting your individual privacy. But do not be surprised if you log in into a coffee maker website <laughs> with your Facebook account and then all of a sudden you start receiving a lot of coffee makers ads. So everything you do has a consequence. Mm -hmm. Everything you do online. And in that, Facebook is free. What you're giving up is your information, mm. um, your behavior, and you're le letting the platform and the AI learn about you and how you behave. So that's the coin. Mm. That's the payment. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm just to, to disclose that I, I, I'm like all for them having that information because it, it gives me a better user experience uh, across everything that I do. As, as long as as long as what I'm doing is is ethical and above board, yeah. then what I, I don't see any issues. I think there's a lot of fallacies out there in terms of what this data 
is used for mm -hmm. and and can be used for and and yeah there's breaches and everything like that but in the main i'm actually comfortable with with people having my data and information for the user experience because it's a yeah. payoff like you say exactly and that's also um it's a big part like we talked about audiences so in spring hill digital we try to give our audiences our brands and and their audiences and their customers a relevant experience mm -hmm. so whenever we look at audiences it's not so that i mean it is so i can sell more but it, you're only going to buy if it's relevant to you i do not want to be annoying so if males 25 to 34 do not care for my product i'm going to exclude them from mm -hmm. my audience and i'm just going to give it to people that are going to care so in that sense would you like if you do not have kids would you like to receive ads that are about diapers no <laughs> you know so that's that's where it comes in and if you have kids in, and you have younger kids you may be interested in diapers but if you have teenagers you may be interested in something else mm -hmm. so if you look at advertising in that sense, like I am satisfying a need and I'm going to find people that have that need, then advertising can be actually used for good. Yeah. But yep. we all know of many examples of people that have used it for not so good reasons. And mm -hmm. that's in everything. You have good and bad people everywhere. Yeah, uh, absolutely. 100% completely agree with you. Um, I think I think uh, Target was a great example of the the whole uh, nappies and, and and pregnancy thing because they could work out from what people were buying, um, oh, sorry, uh, female customers were buying whether they were pregnant or not, and then they had specific targeted product placements within their newsletters that said buy this and buy that. I'm comfortable with that. People think it's sneaky, but I'm I'm quite comfortable with things like that because, like you said. It's probably something you're gonna want, so yeah, you know, exactly. That's fine. Exactly. Yeah, Target the, took it a little bit too far. Yeah, yeah, was, you know, but uh, yeah, we're we'll, we're all learning. Every even the best intentions can at some point. So I don't blame Target for <laughs> for uh, skipping a bit there, but <laughs> uh, and taking it a little bit too far. But um, uh, I thought their heart was in the right place, mm -hmm. and I thought they use their data properly and it was it was true that mm -hmm. person was pregnant so yeah 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 it it was it was a, a little bit a, you know a little bit over the line but in the essence of it and, and yeah. the practicalities of what they were trying to do made perfect sense to me exactly exactly so I'd like to move on to more of the, the back end now. I know we've spoken mm -hmm. about targeting and, and uh, almost building that persona, which is fantastic to do for anyone looking to just understand their audience on and off mm -hmm. Facebook. But th there's, this, uh, there's this thing that Facebook have now, which is Facebook Ads Manager, uh, mm -hmm. which allows you to create and, and develop um, your own ads. So what do we need to know to get started on this platform? Yeah, that's a great question. So the first... I love Business Manager is the best best uh, improvement to to Facebook ads <laughs> ever made. Um, it makes creating ads very simple. So you can create ads without Business Manager, mm -hmm. but if you have a page and are going to think about running ads, do get the Business Manager. It's free. Facebook helps you setting up. Uh, because it's going to be much easier to manage your audiences. It's much easier to manage your ads, your creative. Everything is just so much easier. Uh, once you start creating an ad within Business Manager, the most important part is the first step. And is get it, getting um, telling Facebook what your objective is. It okay. doesn't seem like it would be, but it is going to determine how the rest of the campaign um, is de defined and is designed. So there are things that Facebook will, options that will de be determined based on your objective. And once you create a campaign with a certain objective, you cannot change that objective. You can change mm -hmm. many things about ad groups and you can change things about the ads, but the campaign objective will always remain the same. So what I will say to businesses thinking about starting is, Think about what you want to get out of Facebook ads first, make a game plan, and then create an ad. Because there is brand awareness where you're going to tell Facebook, hey, 
I want to get in front of as many people as possible. So I want impressions or I want a number of people or I want to be three times in one week in front of the same person. So that's brand awareness. And Facebook is going to concentrate on delivering impressions or getting those eyeballs on your ad. But if you tell Facebook, I actually want people that will buy my product, then that's a conversion. And that you're telling Facebook, I don't care. And it's not that I don't care, but don't concentrate so much in the impressions. I want to get people that are going to buy my product. And so it, it concentrates on that and your cost per impression, your cost per reaching that one person may go up. Mm -hmm but your cost per sale might go down. So okay. you have to think about this. And there is a thousand steps in the middle, like creating the conversion <laughs> and what does it mean? And, um, and can you start a campaign based on conversions, which if you're new to Facebook, probably that's not the right thing because Facebook needs a certain number of conversions to learn who that person is. Okay. So there is a process, but the first step is thinking, what do I want from Facebook ads? what am I going to tell Facebook algorithm to optimize for? Because it will, it's going to drop the rest of the key performance metrics and it's going mm -hmm. to concentrate in the one that you're telling them. R really interesting because it's just similar to what you do from a marketing strategy or tactics or however you want to implement mm -hmm. it. It's like, what do you want to achieve? And, and I think that's, that's the difference and the, the, the difference maker from, from a good marketer and somebody that, that, doesn't know the foundations of good marketing is the fact that if you want brand awareness or you want to generate leads, they're two massively different things. Yeah. So you need yeah. to look at them very differently, but, but to somebody from the outside looking in, um, they mm -hmm. might not see that, that they just see it as marketing. Mm -hmm. If you like. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and whenever you ask, um, clients and businesses, what do you want? It's always more sales. Of course <laughs> it's always more sales. Um, but we as marketers have to figure out the best way to get there. And sometimes it's not the direct path. Mm -hmm. um, actually, most often than not, is not a direct path there. I, I don't just put an ad on Facebook and let it rain money because it's not <laughs> how it is. Although a lot of people think about it. They go, oh, I need to be in Facebook or in Instagram and then yeah. money will rain over me. No, <laughs> you have to have a plan. You have to... If you do not have enough traffic to your site, if you do not give enough food to the algorithm to figure out what your profile, uh, what the audience profile is, then the algorithm won't work mm -hmm. for you. It will, you will just spend a lot of money and the algorithm will be lost. So the game plan is normally let the algorithm learn by driving traffic, by bra driving brand awareness. And then once the algorithm knows, then go to like more direct paths and then mm -hmm. you go retarget you go lookalikes you go custom audiences so there is a path it, i always tell people facebook looks uh, facebook ads look way more simpler than they truly are yeah because it's really user friendly you're like oh i just click here click here click here and i'm like it looks simple, but it is not. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think I think that's a perfect way to to summarize um, a social media marketer or a social media expert and somebody that uses social media because front facing it should look simple, it should look easy, it should look obvious, but the back end is far from it, um, and mm -hmm. and that's a, a really good way of summing it all. So speaking of of, of the front facing part. Mm -hmm. you've got your, your, your audience, you know, um, what they like and how you're going to target them and, and that specific subset of, of, of your, um, target market you've done, you, you've told, um, a business manager what you want to achieve. Now you need to make the actual Facebook ad. So what elements do we need here and what makes a yeah. good ad? So before the ad, you go into the audience. So you go objective and then you go into your audience okay. and your budget and your bidding strategy. But then you create the ad. In that ad, there, there are several elements that you have to look at. First is what is your offer? What are you offering? Right? It has to be relevant to the audience. You cannot just 
talk all about you and just offer nothing. You have to give them something. In, in, now in social media and in paid social media, you have to give before you can receive. I sound like I'm in church. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is true. It's, you have to give before you can receive. So you have to have a good offer. You have to have a clear call to action, which we also call CTA. What do you want them to do? People will only do what you tell them to. And these can be applied to any part of marketing, any mm. part of advertising. This was the same case in infomercials. Whenever we, we were advertising, we'll have the phone number up all the time. But only when the, when the voiceover will say, call now, mm -hmm. people will actually call, even though the phone number was always there. Yeah. So in that, that sense, very, very clear, only include one CTA. A lot of people get confused, like follow us, but go to my website, but uh, get this coupon. No, be simple. People don't have time to figure out, okay, you're giving me way too many choices. Um, so that's about the CTA. Um, and then kind of wrapping all of that is your messaging. Your messaging has to be, again, all about the audience and what they're going through. No matter what, is it a recession? Is it a good economy? Is it a pandemic? Is it, what is it? And how does your message can, how does it adapt to it? Um, and then the other elements more obvious are the picture. Mm -hmm. The picture has to coordinate with the message, which you cannot imagine how many times I have seen a message <laughs> go one way and the picture just reflect other. And you're like, that, well, that's not, yeah, that's not making sense. Um, your picture is up to 70, 80% of your ad in some format. Mm -hmm. So it's, it needs to tell a story. It needs to have meaning. If I okay. take everything else out, does the picture tell me this, that story? Um, so whether, <clears throat> excuse me, whether the picture is, um, a very professional picture or, a uh, you know, a picture that you and I could make with our iPhone, that it's not as relevant as it needs to go with the message. Mm -hmm. So that those are the elements that I really always look at um, that make a good ad. And all of it has to be in conjunction. They all have to work together. Yeah, absolutely. Is there, is there something on, on the creative side of it, uh, I'm talking images and video here, is there something that works better than, than other elements like i think you can have carousels and all that kind of stuff or is it dependent again on the message and the industry and all that kind of thing it depends a lot but i'm going to tell you if you have a video which i highly recommend um videos you can make videos within the platform very easily you don't need a video production if you have six pictures then you can tell facebook to make a video of it mm -hmm. so it's just like a slideshow and then they even give you some music or some things that you can figure out and make a small video. Whatever you do, even if it's produced or you make it within platform, make the video, the first three seconds are key. Okay. Because if people, if people are scrolling through their newsfeed, you need those three seconds to make them curious about what's next. Um, and you have to get your brand out there. I cannot have three seconds of dead air. I don't have, I cannot have three seconds that doesn't attract people. Don't get my name out. You lost them. Just those three seconds are wasted and they will move on. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen somebody go through their news feed? It's just super fast. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm being generous with three seconds. I, I almost recommend down to two, but okay. three seconds, it's, it's a good compromise for somebody that has not done it before because it's mm -hmm. very difficult to get a message within two seconds um so but those first two seconds are the most important i mean and, and those two seconds don't necessarily have to be the message it just needs to grab no. the attention as well and and i think the, the 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 marker that i would put there is that if you're not sure how important that is make a facebook account or go on your own facebook okay. account and start scrolling and how long, what's grabbing your attention and how long are you giving that video to gain your attention? And that is your marker. 
Exactly, exactly. Or go and look at competitive. Very few businesses do this. If you have a competitor that you know is doing good advertising or you have an aspirational brand. I mean, I'm not Apple, but if I want to, I, I like their styling, I mm-hmm. like their pictures, then I go and look at how they're doing and then apply it to my business. So you can go into Facebook and look at what each brand is doing. You can see their ads, their historic ads. So I love doing that. because sneaky. Yeah, it is <laughs> sneaky, but it's, it's about their transparency. So uh, without having to receive them, you can go into, uh, let's say, L'Oreal page, and you go to uh, their about page, their information, and there is a, a place for transparency, and it will tell you this company is running ads. Mm-hmm. And then you can click on it and then go in and see everything that they're doing. So go to a big brand. See how mm. they're doing it. Go to your compar- competitors. Can you do better? Can you, can you do equally? Are you, and just start comparing what you can do because it's also about, like we said, it's about your resources. Maybe you don't have money to go and have a video producer, but you mm. could make a six-picture video in mm-hmm. a platform. So, Yeah. So speaking of of finances, there's just one element that I wanted to just go back on uh, Mm -hmm. before we look at what you do after you've hit that big red um, submit button and and everyone sees your fantastic ad. And and that's the bid strategy. So Mm -hmm. we've done all those elements, but there's one thing that you highlighted that we haven't covered yet is a bid strategy. So what are we talking about here? Yeah, your bid strategy, um, it is... There is many elements to it, but basically is how do you want to enter the auction? Mm. You can just only trust Facebook and say, hey, my objective is to get traffic to my website. So get as many people to my landing page as possible. And Facebook will know when somebody has landed on your page uh, and at the lowest cost. Mm -hmm. And you say, Facebook, you handle that and that's you doing it. And so it will try to find that person that will go to your landing page for the lowest cost. Um, now your costs there are very variable because one day may be one dollar, the next day maybe fifty cents, and then in weekends it may be two dollars. Mm. So if you have an appetite for a variable <clears throat> cost per landing page, then you leave it there, and you know at the end of the month it's going to balance out in some sort of number. Okay. Uh, but it's very it is uh, very susceptible to uh, trends. Mm-hmm. So another way will be to say, okay, Facebook, I want my average bid to be 50 cents. Like, okay, if you go up one day, then you have to go down the next day. Mm. And so in that sense, you're not giving total freedom to the algorithm. You're saying stay within 50 cents. Or the third option will be, I don't want to go over 50 cents because mm-hmm. I cannot afford it, right? If, if, you, if you get a sale for um, 50 cents, then I'm good. If you give it for $10, then I'm not good. I'm not making any money. So your ability to spend budget then comes into, into uh, play because whenever you give the freedom to, for Facebook, the more freedom you give it, the more budget you will spend um, from your plan budget. Mm-hmm. But the more restrictive you are, then you probably won't spend as much budget. I have clients <clears throat> who are doing cost per likes. Um, they have, they're trying to build a community. And uh, when we go with cost, just a restricted cost, we do a tenth of the budget than if we tell the algorithm to go to town. Okay. But yeah. Again, it's can the brand afford it? Is that within your objectives? Right? Yeah. So in your objectives, in the bidding strategy can be changed over time. And normally I will start with, let's see where the market is. Let's see how much budget we can spend. Let's see, let's see what Facebook thinks. Is it an average of 30 cents? Is it an average of three dollars? And then from then on. Um, once we know, okay, we cannot go over a certain limit, then the decision comes, you're, you won't spend as much budget, is that okay? And they say, yes, because I'm not making money at a certain level, then we balance them out. 
So okay. it's not an easy answer. You have many options and then you have to find what's right for your business. And I didn't even get into whether you pay per impression or per page. <laughs> Page like that's that's just getting into a rabbit hole, which yeah. I would love to go into. So. <laughs> yeah, <I'm sure>. <laughs> <laughs> but that's those are basic um, beating strategies that you yeah. can find. Yeah, uh, absolutely, and and it, it's whatever's right for the business. Like you say, it's it's whatever is affordable at the time and whatever you want to achieve, and a whole host of things go go into that. But it was just interesting mm-hmm. to to highlight that there are a whole load of bid, bidding strategies that you can implement. Um, yeah. Alongside that is the after it goes live so we're doing this for a certain objective to achieve a certain objective but whether we achieve that we can only do by looking at the metrics so what metrics should we be looking at okay so now we're at the end of the of the process and guess what we're going to look back to your objective (laughs) and to the beginning of the process because if your objective was to create brand awareness the performance metrics that we're going to look at are number of impressions, cost per impression, um, number of people I'm reaching, how many times I'm reaching them, uh, and engagement. Mm -hmm. I probably are more likely to look at whether people are answering um, or uh, commenting on it. Are they sharing my posts? Like what kind of brand awareness? And there is a estimated call lift um, that uh, brand recall lift that Facebook can actually give you. And it will tell you, well, two days after they have seen your ad, they 2% of people recall your ad and they know who you are. Mm-hmm. So those metrics are very brand awareness level. If I actually told Facebook and I want traffic to my site, then, which I will always recommend, do landing page as an objective. Like you do traffic and then you say, I want people arriving to my landing page. Um, if you want that, then we will look at how many people click on it, um, the link clicks, and how many people arrive to the landing page. And then what did they do afterwards? But I'm not telling Facebook I want people that convert and become a lead. I just want people to get to the landing page. So uh, because of many reasons, you, that, that it's a very valid um, objective. So that's what it is. Now, if I say conversions and I want leads, then I have to go farther. And although I'm worried about my cost per impression and how much it costs per eyeball looking at my ad, that's not my main concern. My main concern is what is my cost per sale or cost per lead? Mm. So I go all the way down in the process and I say, well, yeah, my, my CPMs are very cheap, but people are not converting. So this is not working. Or my CPMs are really high. I'm not getting as much traffic, but guess what? The traffic I'm getting is really qualified and it's converting. So I'm okay with that. So again, depends on what objective you set out uh, for Facebook to achieve and for your campaign to achieve. And then you go back. And I have, I have clients that have many uh, objectives. So what we do is we create different campaigns. And then we track them and balance budget according to what's feeding their needs best. But you cannot achieve everything with one campaign. That's also a, a very big mistake that people <laughs> think. I'm just one campaign does it all. No, it doesn't. And and that's that's very sim- simply put and, and and perfectly put in in a way that it it, it covers just all the things we try and do in marketing. So it's about a customer journey. So you're not saying you'll do this face Facebook ad and it'll inform people. It'll make people aware. It'll get people interested. It'll get them to convert. It'll get them to engage. It'll get them to be an advocate. Of you. No, 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 no. It, it, like you said, it's one CTA, one CTA, one purpose, follow the journey. What's the next step? And usually that end conversion will be off Facebook or, and by conversion, I don't necessarily mean monetary because it it might not be, but, you know, usually Mm -hmm. that conversion's off Facebook. So it's like tracking it all the way back again, customer journey, step by step. Facebook might only be one part, a really good, crucial part, but one part. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I have a client uh, whose only method of advertising is Facebook. Like there's no other marketing, just Mm -hmm. Facebook. Yet um, they're... The orders come from direct traffic. And when we stop advertising on Facebook, direct orders drop. <laughs> oh, wow. 
So <clears throat> know that people may not convert right away from Facebook, but you need to be aware that there is an influence that is happening. And there is many reasons why that's there. And we can go into another fun rabbit hole here. <laughs> But know that it's going to influence the rest of your marketing. Facebook doesn't work alone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and for anyone that's listening, just think about what you've seen in your Facebook feed. And one, have you bought anything from that, that company? And two, have you gone through that Facebook ad? Possibly not. Uh, at the moment, I'm getting hit with a lot of Disney Plus adverts on my, on my feed. Would I go through Facebook to, to, to subscribe? No. I'd probably go direct to site. Exactly what you were just saying there. So it, mm -hmm. again, it depends what what your um, what your objective is. Absolutely. So my objective now, uh, Naira, is to provide you with some quick fire questions and get you to answer them as quickly as possible. Are you ready for that? Mm -hmm. I may. Yes. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> good start. Really good start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's that that source of info that you just cannot live without? I cannot live without Facebook business information <laughs> and other people's podcasts like yours. <laughs> Yay. So, yes. Yes. Like your podcast. Did <laughs> I answer that? Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, like I told you to. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last thing you remember Googling? I Google the, the Van Gogh um, piece of art that just got stolen. Oh, didn't know about that. Interesting. I'll be looking yes. at that. There you go. That's you're going to be your first Google. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. After this, definitely. Uh, if you could tell your 10-year-old self one thing, what would it be? Continue coding. I started coding. I, I know. Um, I'm going to date myself now, but I started with logo, which is something that probably nobody remembers, but mm. it was like very, very, even before basic, before everything, it was just very, very very um basic really and i started with that creating the little games that would tuk, 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 mm -hmm. tuk, um and went into basic from there did some other programming but then i stopped mm. and i didn't think that that was a career choice that that you could yeah. actually do that for a living um i would tell myself you know stick to it you're a data gig you love that stuff you can actually really make a career with that yeah, I, I, I honestly think I would do the same. I think uh, if I could tell my 10-year-old self one thing, I'd say, there's this internet, uh, I'm dating myself here, there's this internet thingy going to gonna crop up. It's going to be a big deal. And the best thing you can do is ignore the, the fancy, flashy, colored things that are coming up on your screen and look at the back end and learn and understand that. I think that's what yeah. I'd do. And my 10-year-old my self would be, no, no, I just want to go and play soccer. That's... That's all I want to do. Like, go away, crazy man. <laughs> uh, okay, so what's the one thing we need to know in marketing right now? Uh, these also should shall pass, meaning every situation, every environment, everything that is happening now, whatever that is, it will pass and you need a plan for it. Mm -hmm. Whether now it's really good, really good economy, it will at some point, the economies are cycles, it will go down. Have a mm. plan for that. If it's really bad right now, know that this will pass. And it may be a different world after today, but it will, it will be there. You need a plan. So have a plan because today is only today. It's not tomorrow. Absolutely. Completely that agree. Again. Philosophical. <laughs> Absolutely. Great way to finish though. <laughs> so uh, Naira, final question. If people want to find out more about you, where should they go? So we have a Facebook profile where we put articles and a LinkedIn profile, uh, facebook.com slash uh, Spring Hill Digital, same for LinkedIn. You can also find us in our, in the, in the, with our website, springhilldigital.com. And you can always send me an email uh, at info at springhilldigital.com. Actually, that email goes to me directly. So um you know, I will be the one answering it. So if you have, if you or your audience have questions, want to follow up on something, just let me know. Naira, thank you so, so much for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. So interesting. I had such a good time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks once again, Naira, for joining us. So interesting and so many actionable takeaways. 
But here's the three that I would focus on personally. The first one is that, did you know how detailed you can get with your Facebook targeting? Even if you aren't using the platform to target customers, it can be a great way to gather insight and develop an understanding as to the profile of those you seek to serve. The second takeaway is when creating an actual Facebook ad, it's important to remember all the key components to stand the best chance of success. And as Naira so eloquently put all of these, they are to make sure you have an offer, provide a message that highlights your solution to a problem, make sure your image or video coordinates with your copy, and please don't use stock imagery. And finally, be clear on what you want people to do. Your call to action, your CTA, spell it out. And finally, if you're using videos, make sure the first three seconds and the first frame, in fact, is engaging enough to get someone's attention. Always think about how quick you scroll through your own feed and what catches your attention while doing this. It's a great starter to becoming a Facebook ad whiz. Thank you so much for joining us today on Marketing Study Lab. It really means the world that you're listening to this out there. And hopefully I've provided you some value. If you're looking to know more about what Marketing Study Lab does and is about, go to marketingstudylab.co.uk or get in touch with me personally, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, or feel free to email me at peter at marketingstudylab.co.uk. Happy marketing. Oh.